go through? Well, I hope so, because it is in the national interest to get improvements upon the Northern Ireland Protocol to make it easier for goods to move freely between um, uh, Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Uh, that's clearly in the interest of the people in Northern Ireland and also for businesses who are really struggling at the moment uh, in terms of trade. How much do you know about it? We haven't seen the detail of the deal, but, you know, I know that often I come onto this programme and tell you that I'm going to oppose what the government's going to do, how we object to uh, some part of it. This is just too important for that. The Good Friday Agreement was negotiated and agreed 25 years ago. I think it is one of the proudest achievements of any political party in the second half of the 20th century. And improvements to the Northern Ireland Protocol will help preserve the peace that was hard won on the island of, of Ireland. And we're not going to do anything to jeopardise that. And we will look to support what the Prime Minister brings back. Is there any circumstances where Labour would not support this? Look, if it improves trade uh, and improves the movements of goods and services a across the uh, Irish Sea, if it uh, has the support of the UK government and the European Union, if it uh, preserves on the island of Ireland uh, the, those, um, the, the no uh, cameras, the no checkpoints, then, then we will support it and we have reason to believe. We are understanding it is, does all those things. So, but there will be a soft border in the Irish Sea. Well, I think it improves upon where we are now. At the moment, you don't have the red and the green lane. And, you know, the red lane is for, for, for stuff that is going to move into the single market. But most stuff that moves from Great Britain into Northern Ireland isn't destined for the single market. It's destined for the supermarket shelves and for other businesses within uh, Northern Ireland. And so look, we welcome the fact that this deal looks to simplify um, the movements of, of goods across the Irish Sea. Um, the ERG, of course, the European Research Group, which are, you know, right-wing uh, backbenchers as part of the Conservative Party, may well decide that this is not a deal that they want to support because the DUP, the Democratic Unionist Party, uh, do not like it. Um, it looks as though potentially Labour could get it over the line for the government. Well, look, we've said that the Prime Minister shouldn't worry about the malcontents on his own backbenches and we will uh, ensure that he has the votes to get this through. But I, I don't want to jump the gun. We haven't seen this deal. We don't know how the DUP and others in the Conservative Party are going to respond. The best thing would be to have cross-party support from right across the political spectrum uh, for this deal and, and I hope that the Prime Minister can secure, secure that. Yeah. Um, do you think there should be or will be a vote in the House of Commons? I think there will be, and I think there should be um, as Doesn't well. Doesn't have to be, does there? I don't think there has to be, but I think that it would make sense to give legitimacy to something that the, the, the Prime Minister can say, this has won a majority, and I believe that he will win a big majority for it because Labour is lending our votes on this occasion uh, to the government. What, does it what difference does it make to the people of Great Britain if this deal does or doesn't go ahead? Well, we are all part of the United Kingdom and uh, the citizens of Northern Ireland are citizens of the whole United Kingdom. Yeah, but they're not part of Great Britain, which is why I made this, this specific yeah. point. Yeah. Well, look, what happens to people in different parts of the country matters to me because I'm a citizen of, of the United Kingdom and I care about people wherever they live mm -hmm. in, in the UK. But also we've got loads of businesses, fantastic businesses in Great Britain who do an awful lot of trade in Northern Ireland. And also we benefit from things that are produced in Northern Ireland that come into um, the rest of the UK. So this is good for the whole of the United Kingdom if we can make the improvements that um, the government have been trying to secure. Everyone's totally excited um, today. We've been here before, though, haven't we? Oh, we've been round and round in circles for years, Kay. I mean, I bet you've lost count of the number of times I you've spoken about have. the Northern Ireland uh, Protocol. And look, some of this comes back to the fact that in 2019, the former Prime Minister, two Prime Ministers ago or whatever, Boris Johnson, said uh, he had an oven-ready deal. He had nothing of the sort. And we're still, today, you know, grappling with this conundrum really uh, but I hope that progress now has finally been uh, made and, and maybe we can stop talking about the Northern Ireland Protocol and start talking about the everyday issues of concern for people both in Northern Ireland and throughout the UK on the cost of living, how to grow our economy and how to improve our public services like our schools and hospitals. OK, I know the boss is, um, has got another um, speech today. He's out and about talking a lot at the moment, isn't he? Um, he's, how, how do you make talking about the G7 sexy uh, to voters who you need to win back? 
So last week, last Thursday, Keir set out the missions that would guide the government if he became uh, Prime Minister. And the first of those missions is to grow our economy, to have the highest sustained growth in the G7. Because the truth is, over the last decade, we've been falling behind our neighbours and our competitors in the growth league tables. It doesn't have to be that way. I am really ambitious for Britain. I know that we've got huge strengths, but at the moment, we're not seizing the opportunities that are out there. So I want strong growth, but I want us to be catching up and excelling uh, against our neighbours and competitors. I think that's what most people in Britain want. They want a successful, dynamic economy, and they want to be competitive with France and Germany, the US and Italy and Japan and, and the other countries in the G7. And today, we're setting out some of the policies that will help us to get there. And things like our Green Prosperity Plan, so we compete in the industry of the future, our plans to make Britain the best place to start and grow a business, some of the reforms that we want to see to the Brexit deal to make it easier for British businesses to trade and to get investment into the UK, reform to business rates to help our high streets to thrive. But the key thing about the mission that we're setting out today on the economy is that this is about good jobs and productivity growth in all parts of the country. It's not good enough, if it ever was, just to have growth in some industries and in some parts of the UK. This has got to be growth and prosperity that's felt by ordinary families and businesses right across the United Kingdom. In the meantime, people can't keep their houses warm. Um, what will you say to your um, shadow, your opposite number, uh, the Chancellor, um, when it comes to the budget and whether or not he should keep the yeah. position that the government presently uh, have adopted to help people with their bills in place? Bills should not be going up in April. The cost of living crisis is still very real for people. It's people's number one concern at the moment. And yet, under the government plans, bills will go up to £3,000 on average from April. But we've set out how we can keep those bills um, at an average of £2,500, still very high, but it means no further increase. And we would do that by properly taxing the windfall profits, the windfalls of war that the big energy companies have made and redirect that money to help families, to help pensioners and also to help businesses with their energy bills. And that's the difference that a Labour government would make.